you introduced the term new war. What do you mean by new war? Well, you know, I introduced it a very long time ago. The book of that title was published in 1999. <laughs> and it was my response to the wars in the Balkans and in post-Soviet space. In fact, it was when I went to Nagorno-Karabakh that I, I sort of thought this doesn't look like my image of war. There were people milling around, the soldiers didn't have uniforms, they wore Adidas running shoes and Ray-Ban sunglasses. And I sort of, so I felt these wars were different. And over the years, um, I've developed the analysis and more and more wars seem to fit that template. And I think what makes them different from what we think of as war, what we think of as war is the Second World War or the Napoleonic Wars where there are two sides that are fighting to the extreme and one side has to win and impose its will on the other as Caspitz explained to us. Whereas these are wars in which most of the violence is directed against civilians, battle is rather rare and the various warring parties gain from violence itself rather than from fighting each other and they gain politically and economically and their wars because they gain from violence, they're less extreme than the wars of the past. They're lower levels of violence, but they create huge numbers of displaced people and atrocities and deaths. Uh, but they're also extremely difficult to end because everyone has an interest in the continuation. And so we've seen large parts of the world characterized by these long new wars, uh, whether you're talking about Africa, the Middle East, the Balkans, mm. uh, and I think it's one of the big problems of our time. Since you said that you have been covering also, that you have read a lot and were, were in the times of the Yugoslav wars, how do you, how do you compare, the, the, for instance, the Bosnian war with the one which is right now in Ukraine, especially when it comes to these strategies of new wars, so we do see a continuation of this strategy. I think we definitely see a continuation on Putin's side. Putin has been fighting new wars since he came to power. Mm. And you see all the tactics on the Russian side that are typical of new wars. The violence against civilians, uh, the looting, the sexual violence. Actually, the actual invasion in 2022 was an exception. I don't know why, maybe it was because Putin had imperial hubris. <laughs> but it's very typical of a new war. But the Ukrainians are fighting in a much more classic way. They really want to win. They want to liberate their territory. And they're really careful not to kill civilians. They do believe in international humanitarian law. So it's very different, and if the Ukrainians can win, I think that will be quite important for international law. How would it shape the future of wars? Will there be a new war 2.0 tournament, or...? Well, I think what the, Ukraine, what the Russian invasion shows us is that wars of the classic kind are now impossible. You can't win wars any longer. And the reason for new wars is because you can't win classic wars. Military technology has advanced to the point that either a classic war will lead to human extinction or to long-term attrition. You can't do what Clausewitz said, which is to compel an opponent to fulfill your will. So wars are hopeless, and we should have learned that from Vietnam, from Iraq, from Afghanistan. So what I hope is that one lesson of the, is that classic wars are impossible. But the risk is that the Ukraine war will turn into a new war if it keeps going, if Ukraine can't win. And that could be terribly dangerous on Europe's border. And unless we start developing a strategy for countering new wars, this could be our global future, which is really alarming.